Hey render people, another angle 3D visuals here to turn some pages with you. We will be using Dynamo in 3ds Max to create a beautiful realistic animation. Let's get going. So this is the effect that we will be creating. A nice page turning, somehow gently caught in the wind and turning. Um, but unfortunately, this entire tutorial is a massive waste of time, both for you and me, because sadly Dynamo, the amazing plugin that I used to create this effect, is no longer available, uh, which has broken my heart to be honest. But if you want to um, watch the tutorial anyway and listen to my mumbling voice, go for it and enjoy. Let's jump straight into Max. I have cheated a little bit this time and got a book um, from my model bank. I think I got this from 3D Sky or something like that. Um, and I just took out a single page from the book. You can see that it is floating above the other pages a little bit. Um, and uh, that's just so we start off our cloth simulation nice and neat. As always, the first thing we'll need to do is add a Dynamo um, modifier to our object. Um, it's starting off with default settings. There's nothing else in this scene. Here's our, def here's our Dynamo modifier here. And let's just see how it works straight away. So, as expected, um, the page sort of falls through. It's colliding and intersecting with our other page because our subdivisions are a little bit low. I can pick this up and throw it around. <laughs> it's <laughs> kind of funny at the moment, but looks nice. Realistic cloth. Let's stop, hit reset. The first thing I'm going to do is change our accuracy. I'm going to put our iterations up to 8 and our subsets down to half a frame. This will just improve the quality. I have a pretty uh, strong beastie computer, so it can handle it. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is change this global drag to perhaps 1. What I've noticed with Dynamo is that this sort of treats um, basically the, I guess the atmosphere or the air, um, changes the drag. So Turning it up to one, I, I, I think it's still like we're in air, but if I put this up to, oh, it can go as high as one. So one is basically water. Let's pretend that this uh, page, this paper is now in water. Um, it was previously, what was it? 0 0.003. So I think that is acting like air. So if we think of 0 0.003 as air and one as water, it will just sort of float around a bit, uh, a lot more soft and elegant next thing we want to do is uh, keep our mass at 1, keep our distance stiffness at 1, and change our bend stiffness to 1 as well. So that means our page will act like a bit of a thicker, glossy pa paper. Um, we'll give a little bit of wind. Um, we want the wind to come from this direction, so that's a negative 100, just for starters. And the last thing we want to do is um, do some pins. Um, I think I've got um, soft selection on, so let's turn that off. I don't know why Dynamo can sort of see the soft selection, but we definitely don't want that. So we will um, just select these guys, set these as our pins. Um, maybe we even want to pin them to this object, which is now selected. The strength is one. Can we go higher than one? Nope. One is the highest. Turn that off. And let's do another interact, see how it works. Excellent. So our paper is a bit thicker now. Um, obviously the wind hasn't caught it, but it's working nice. Um, if we turn up the wind and maybe even give a bit of wind in the Z direction, so it pushes the page up. Let's see what happens. Excellent, working really well so far. Um, so next we can play around with the wind. But before I play with around the wind, I will just change the drag a little bit. Um, let's make this kinetic friction. So this is what it's colliding with with the ground. I'm not sure if it's the other stuff in the scene as well, but let's just turn up the friction there. 
and also turn up its self collisions as well. So 0 0.01 and 0 0.01. So that's quite a dramatic change. Um, and let's just do another interact. It's uh, looking a little bit soft at the moment, this paper. But we're getting closer to the desired result. So basically what we want to happen, let's do a bake now. Um, we want the wind to pick up our piece of paper and fling it over. So we get a full page turning. Um, as you can see, this is happening quite successfully already. We got to 100 frames and it didn't quite get there. So that tells me that we need to turn up our wind. Let's try 1000. Um, and just a little bit of extra variation where you will make it 200 in the X direction. So most of the wind is coming from this direction, but a little, little bit of the wind will also come from this direction. So if we do an interact, you can see it's stronger, it's moving a bit faster, it'll fling it down. And one issue we're having now is that it's really slowly moving down. So as well as a little bit of turbulence in the wind, we want um, it, at the end of our animation, the page to fall nicely onto the page. Um, I think one of the reasons why it's sort of floating there is because of the drag, but also it's got this consistent Y um, wind that's sort of keeping it upright, like a paper plane. Actually, a paper plane would be really cool to simulate. That would be uh, interesting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to animate our wind, um, as well as giving it a bit of turbulence. So I'm just going to keyframe all of this. Um, as well as giving it some turbulence, it'll also make uh, sure that the, the, the paper page hits the book at the end and it makes it nice and uh, clean in its turnings. So we'll go back to our zero. Um, let's turn on our auto key. Let's start off at zero and zero. Um, let's go to maybe frame 16. Try wind of negative... 650 just to get a little bump and 750 up so um, as you can see that wind gets stronger to that 16th um, frame and then let's make the wind die a little bit so perhaps you know we'll get the page floating up a little bit and then down and then it gets a nice big kick because if it's just one page turning it's not so interesting so on, on frame 32, let's just make these zero and zero again. Um, I might just bump up this Windex to 300 just so it's a bit more interesting. So, yep, the Windex is consistent. The wind Y and Z um, now goes to frame 16, gets a bit higher and then a bit lower. So I'll just do a save and let's just do a bake and see how that works. Excellent, I'll just cancel that. So it's working exactly as I hoped. The um, the wind sort of starts to pick it up and then dies. So now let's take it to about frame 50 and really get this thing going. Let's turn our auto key back on. Um, negative 1200 maybe and 350. So it, it dies and then gets really strong. And then, I don't know, around frame 74, let's um, make it die again. Um, I think I'll just make it to zero and zero and see how that works. So let's do a bake, see how that comes out. First little wind push, second wind push, not bad, but yeah, it looks like it's in slow motion there. So I think back at our 74 frame here, let's um, give this wind a bit more direction in the, uh, a bit more strength in the other direction. So maybe plus 100 and then a lot more in the Z direction. So it pushes the page down. So maybe 500. Um, and let's see how that works. Little push. Beautiful, yes. And then there's a few frames at the end for the um, page to settle. 
So that's basically it. That's how I made that little animation. Um, I then stuck it in a scene that I was working on for a private client at the time. Animated a nice little camera. Um, the camera movement was very subtle. It was from about here to here. It showed that nice page turn, which was in real time. Um, so, you know, the wind looked a little bit authentic. And I think that's come out very well. I'm obviously loving Dynamo. I think it's adding a lot extra life to um, some of my animations. And it is so simple, it's so enjoyable, it's so stable, and it is so fun. So guys, check out Dynamo um, and have some fun. Thanks for watching.